afternoon. I would like to welcome you here on day two after a very heavy day one. Uh, I would like to speak about some specifics of the implementation of uh, IRP and SOAR at the industrial facilities. I'm from the Yevras company, which is a big scale company, quite sizable, which is specializing in mining, reduction of the rails, uh, rolled uh, steel, other interesting things. Uh, a few words about me. I'm Andrei Nukin. I'm in charge of the cybersecurity in the Yevras company. I had worked for previous uh, years in different uh, industries, but I've uh, been working for Yevras since 2014. Uh, so what do companies normally start to uh, create in this SOC monitoring solution? First of all, any IT specialists create the monitoring system. We can see something working there, something not working. But uh, why it's not working? Well, if it's uh, faulty, we just need to bring it back to life. Then we create this monitoring system while adding some cybersecurity events. We understand why it's not happening, there was something infected, there was something broken down, whatever. And the final stage is the security operations center. We can see why it's not working, what's not working, and we can still react to it proactively or anyhow. So we can handle that, having the SOC in place. As we develop uh, this solution, the number of sources, the number of events uh, do grow quite seriously at a certain moment in time, uh, such events uh, really become nu numerous, uh, so the operator cannot physically handle all of them because uh, there are plenty of uh, actions that they would have to take uh, and the reaction time really increases significantly. So what are we supposed to do about all of that? We cannot uh, accelerate uh, a human being. Uh, so in a perfect situation, we just need to use the complete automation. So uh, it would help uh, people use the automated uh, solution. But you know, the sci-fi movies demonstrate that the full automation does not lead to anything good. So in reality, we just need to have the automated assistant, uh, which would uh, take off some routine operations from the operator, some operations that do not require anything specific to know, but uh, still there are plenty of such operations um, to relieve uh, the operator from. As the uh, security operations centers grow, they work by using this five by eight mode. Uh, there is no one at night and there is no one there at work on the weekend. But there are plenty of incidents uh, which require manual information update, uh, so the operator would have to manually uh, look for something in the system. And very frequently there are plenty of the so-called one-click events. The one-click events are the events that uh, can be both uh, related to an incident and not related to an incident. Mainly it's because that some of the correlation rules uh, cannot be uh, adjusted in the fine way. It's just like a mesh. With big uh, cells, uh, a lot of fish will penetrate through them. With uh, small cells in the mesh, uh, you'll get a lot of garbage inside. So you will be filtering too many events that are non-incident events and you'll be just clicking them away. But you, you cannot uh, handle them any other way. Sometimes the SOC experts uh, do not have any, any, their own uh, policy of uh, managing the antivirus software and uh, firewalls. They address the IT experts. It takes some time, but if we take this uh, schedule 5 by 8, 
if the admin is uh, coming back home uh, and somebody calls him, they say, give me 30 minutes before I reach home and I'll do it. So it's not so good. There is no uniform uh, environment to track down this uh, whole system. For example, there is an incident and uh, we report it and then we get the signal that's uh, handled. Uh, sometimes it uh, really increases the reaction time. So the admin is on his way home. It takes him an hour, for example. And during the course of this hour, the incident actually does grow. For example, remember that Pietia virus, it took it 20 minutes to encrypt a very large network. So if the operator has to do a lot of manual work, so they'll be wasting quite a lot of time uh, debugging it. So they will be obviously skipping some of the incidents uh, just because they have too much work and they cannot physically handle it. So basically, a lot of people consider that in a production environment, in a production company, the security operations center is a special, has a special dedicated structure with very, very special events in it related to the production itself. But basically, if you have a full-grown company and if it's treating security seriously, all of your technology is uh, buried uh, deeply inside the DMZ and the corporate network is of course separate from the internet. So in order to make sure that something bad happens uh, in the production processes, you just need to penetrate uh, through the corporate network and get to the technological network because the technological uh, network does not have any direct access to the internet. Therefore, in the production facilities and the production companies, the events uh, related to security are the same as everywhere else. Phishing, viruses, brute forcing, just like everywhere else on the internet. Uh, it's just like white noise, there's nothing specific here. There are some minor diff differences, but uh, they do not affect it too much. So, as I said, the technology network is isolated, it does not have any direct access to the Internet, and there is a DMZ which separates it and uh, which you can use for monitoring as well. There is something specific there, however, if you are full-grown and uh, you already get into this technology segment and you try to monitor something there, so these uh, proprietary protocols uh, related to technology, they do not necessarily relate to TCP IP, as we may all be aware. And there will be a lot of obsolete uh, old uh, systems there that you cannot remove just because the software that runs there cannot run on anything else. Uh, so they use Windows XP environment and you cannot just uh, upgrade it to Windows 10, it will be much cheaper just to maintain Windows XP, for, for, for example. The production facilities are allocated territory-wise. They may be scattered and uh, they may be separated and there are not stable communication channels between them. So in the production, the priority goes to the production running smoothly and non-stop, so there should be continuous production, and that's it. Uh, unlike the corporate network, which should be confidential and then everything else, and here it should be just stable and uh, running and then everything else, so that's what makes a difference. There is a certain specific uh, specifics here. As I said, uh, the companies are scattered uh, on different sites. For example, in West Siberia, uh, these, uh, this machinery is uh, located in, on different sites connected by bus routes. And uh, it's a huge scale enterprise, it's a huge scale facility. And we try to keep all of these uh, services um, in uh, locally, so there will be no cloud storage or any services like services like that. We try to minimize that, of course, but uh, last year, for example, it helped us uh, pass through the year without any significant losses. 
There are some difficulties there, however. So, for example, I belong in Moscow and uh, Novokuznetsk is in West Siberia and the time difference is four, time, four hours. I'm still in bed and Novokuznetsk uh, uh, production facility already has lunch time. Of course, uh, the target uh, that our facilities uh, possess is a good target for the IT army of Ukraine and any such hackers, for instance. They are attempting it, uh, and their target is not just uh, getting any financial benefit uh, out of it, but actually destroying the infrastructure and creating this type of damage to the infrastructure. So the norms and requirements, uh, different uh, strict requirements uh, regulate the reaction time. So you'll have to manage to do that correspondently. And uh, you use help desk and you use mail, and uh, it's all arranged in a pretty complicated way. Therefore, uh, therefore, I'm telling this whole story just to explain the need of the SOAR. There are plenty of routine and typical tasks uh, that should be automated, like, for example, the enrichment of the event, uh, getting information from the feeds and different other sources. Uh, you just block the IP and URLs on the perimeter. There may be just 10,000 of IP addresses in the block list. It's a normal thing these days. If we see, if we see some virus penetration, uh, we should isolate a certain machine or server, uh, scan for viruses. So the operator has plenty of tasks, uh, especially when your security operations is uh, small enough and it's not 150 people with shared responsibilities, for instance. Our SOC has four operators and they work in shifts. They have quite a lot of work. So we were thinking about what we are supposed to do about that. Are we need to, do we need to grow the number of people or just make automation. So we checked for automation, the automation of the manual tasks and taking the load of these people um, on the typical standards, like for example, the block of the IP address on the perimeter. So you just push the button, put it in the block list. We automate the search by feed, uh, by IOC to correlate that and uh, check and verify. What it leads to is the use of the machine learning and chat GPT uh, AI, which, which would help you in work and the processing. When we were about to choose the IRP and the SOAR, there was a question on how to choose it and what we need to address. So these are the four things that are important to consider. Flexibility to interact so with different proprietary systems and protocols. So we need to consider that some of them are not standard, different protection uh, tools. And sometimes these protection tools may get obsolete and you also need to connect with them. Uh, we need to have a more state-of-art solution like machine lear learning, AI and other things which really help us much handle the incidents properly. And uh, you cannot avoid it, of course. Uh, the state requires, uh, you just need to support uh, uh, the, the state solutions. So this SOAR is uh, split in the IRP, Incident Response Platform, which uh, automates this entire monitoring process um, so that you would be able to react and enrich this information. And you have the security orchestration, automation and response, uh, SOAR, S-O-A-R, that uh, is about uh, security orchestration, automation and response. Um, so what is uh, the, what the operator is supposed to do at the incident? What is he supposed to do? 
at the incident. Check the headers, uh, check the sandboxes, analyze the URL, clean the boxes. Just uh, one small incident we take as an example. If there is a brute force uh, from the outer service, uh, like scanning the password checkup, we just need to check the IP of the attackers, whether it, it's really the hackers IPs or there is some legitimate service services we need to put it in the blacklist you need to synchronize it with the firewall etc so when we deployed this SOAR solution a big share of all those operations were taken by SOAR that enriches uh, the information on its own, addressing uh, the corporate uh, systems, uh, checking for their IPs, the user credentials, and threat intel is used there, checking and verifying the IPs and belonging to certain groups, uh, checks for IOC, uh, looks for virus total, etc. There are plenty of uh, such uh, things that are routine and uh, they handle it. And uh, as a result, uh, well, there's an incident, it fills it uh, with some various information and shows a very beautiful card to the operator with the verdict which is ready. So this is an incident or not an incident and then the operator checks this with their eyes proves that that's a bad thing or not quite a bad thing and there are some options either you automatically react through api or you just uh, put this task uh, uh, through any solution uh, that sends it to the admin and uh, then they react correspondently and uh, show the result in the end so what we have been able to achieve uh, due to IRP SOAR, so first of all we just reduced the routine load on the SOC operators, we avoided uh, increasing the number of the staff and we did not uh, increase the number of the operators either. So. Last year proved that this operation, uh, this automation, and as we saw the number of the incidents doubled, we still maintained the reaction and verification and detection time at the previous level as before 2022. These MTTDs, MTTRs, uh, mean time to detect, mean time to respond, etc., etc. Uh, have been reduced. We take off the load of the administrators, um, some routine load, uh, so that they do have to manually block the IP addresses and uh, run an antivirus. So basically, everything is put in a uniform console, which visualizes it quite nicely and you can create uh, dashboards for the management that are very neat looking and uh, they are very very convenient for the operators we improve uh, the context uh, for the operators uh, so not just the cm incidents uh, get there but uh, they get a complete picture on all, all of the information that they have uh, is already there. So we just put it all in the play, playbook and we have a very clear algorithm on uh, how we do it. I, I may speak for hours, of course. Uh, anyway, this automation really helps out. I, I think this is it. Uh, that's all I wanted to explain. Uh, I'm open for your questions. What makes this uh, automation of uh, SOAR different from X, XDR? XDR automation and SOAR automation, what's the difference? Well, XDR stipulates that you put these engines uh, on the machines and the SIM uh, is distributed with the XDR, as far as I know. I don't know exactly, but uh, you cannot uh, integrate other products and other information there to XDR. Uh, but I may be wrong. Uh, 
because in our company we do not uh, use XDR. I think XDR is the in integrated component. Hello, your presentation was very interesting, but uh, what about these industrial facilities, the automated uh, reaction events? Uh, uh, did the IT experts uh, allow you to get deep into the network with this? As I mentioned, we do not uh, automatically react to the technology processes. Technological processes only have notifications, uh, and that's it. Uh, the main things that we automated is basically about the outer perimeter that connects to the Internet. That's where we work with the firewall, we block different URL, URLs, different links, uh, we work with the antivirus. So this is it. And, uh, was it really difficult to uh, agree on that with the IT experts? and align it all with them. Uh, of course, they did not welcome us. Uh, they did not welcome us. Uh, uh, but uh, basically, to speak seriously, uh, our IT experts are quite uh, aware about uh, cyber security. So they said, we said, we, we can take off the load. Uh, off your shoulders uh, about blocking this and blocking that and deblocking that. Uh, it, so it was a wise decision, and uh, we could not really uh, influence uh, the work of those uh, systems that they handle much. So they they said okay, um, but at the initial phase, uh, I remember they blocked uh, the root DNS servers and the internet. Uh, was switched off uh, and they were looking for the cause of the problem and then we figured it out but it was just uh, as we started but with the mass mass attacks that um, started last year as you may be aware uh, there are still some human errors in place because we started uh, blocking those ip addresses uh, on the massive scales and uh, some legitimate ip addresses uh, went along in a whole bunch uh, but nowadays the help desk is trained uh, and they go to the SOC operators and check out uh, whether they've uh, blocked this or that address but initially uh, I would have to admit that it was not that easy because it's uh, it was not quite clear why, why it all stopped working but when we uh, arrange that process properly, it uh, became much easier for all, all of us. Next question. Can we integrate IRP and SOAR without uh, SIEM? So we take the logs from the firewalls and antivirus software. In theory, you can do that, but uh, SOAR is for a different purpose. That's for orchestration, for correlation. The SOAR solutions, they take the available incidents from CM and they, they process the incidents. They do not collect uh, the events, they do not correlate them. So I'm afraid that without uh, any of this SIM solution, you won't be able to handle that. So far, I haven't uh, seen such solutions so far anyway. That uh, is the automation of the reaction. I missed uh, the beginning of your presentation, unfortunately. Did you actually say which product you based your solution upon? I didn't, but it's based upon security vision. Uh, we were thinking about different products, uh, foreign products and Russian ones, uh, but security vision uh, seemed very flexible and was a very good uh, value for money. And it works well. What do you use uh, SOC, as SOC and CM? Q-Radar from IBM. We, of course, will have to replace it with something because it's from IBM. So far it's working good, but of course we will have to <coughs> replace it for something. And we are currently in search of what we may replace it for. Thank you for your presentation. 
At which stage uh, uh, it would be more appropriate to implement the SOAR product? Uh, at the inception phase or when you already have the algorithms in the network? I think uh, it's the second option which looks more attractive when you already have everything in place and you understand what, where and how. Uh, so you, you of course understand that you can automate it uh, not uh, in the very beginning when you still have uh, changes but um, when you have already fixed algorithms and you understand of course this is the thing that we can automate and it will not affect anything in a bad way i have a similar question by the way uh, how did did you evaluate your maturity level before you started integrating irp and soar in it management infosec cyber security so if the system is supposed to react in the automated fashion, we assume that the IT experts and uh, cybersecurity experts uh, should uh, align uh, their work in a predictable way. Yes. How did we choose this SOAR solution? I was on a regular basis uh, checking the incidents uh, and how much time it we spent uh, fixing the incidents, so at a certain point in time we saw that the reaction, sta reaction time started growing and the, the number of incidents per operator started growing, so it all led to the reaction time increase. So there was a question that people uh, could not handle that on their own, so we would have to double the resources, then double the number of people and take off the load. So instead we decided to make automation as a solution in order not to double the number of staff. We had already had SOC in place and we had those mechanisms in place, but they worked like that. There was an incident, the operator reacts to it, sends uh, this ticket to the help desk with their own playbooks and they block something there, they isolate something there. So when we checked them, it became apparent to us that some of them can really be automated without damaging the IT service on its own, so that we do not crash any system. That's where it all started. We started having more issues, but we already knew which management processes could be painlessly automated. So you launched this SOC and in terms of security you were at a high level and you understood this whole process. But what about IT? Was IT uh, mature enough? Uh, were IT people mature in, enough and were they sticking to regulations? Of course, uh, our IT was very mature, very mature and they had all of the processes in place. Well, in, in terms of the system implementation and changes and main maintenance of all of the documents, it was all strictly stipulated and we understood what, how and uh, when can be handled. Uh, so this is uh, how it all worked. Uh, they show me, they signal me that my time is up. Of course, uh, I'll stick around. Uh, so, would you please come up to me with more questions uh, there, outside. And thanks very much for joining me here.